Okay, so hello everyone, and uh, welcome to Tsuroka. I'm the local organizer of this meeting, and uh, you're right there. And <laughs> <laughs> this is a very beautiful city. It's a rural area, but still, um, this, this is where the most of the rice is produced in Japan. And, uh, that means that most of the good sake is produced in Syria. So you're going to enjoy it out during the week. Uh, my experience in buying hackathon um, is starting in the 2008, and I'm proud to say that I have attended every single hackathon until then. Uh, so I've attended all of the uh, nine hackathons uh, from since 2008. And um, as Toshiaki uh, talked uh, just before, uh, I think the main aim of this hackathon is to uh, provide a way to save the future of our biomedics and biological community uh, by successful data integration technologies. And uh, back in 2008, or even before, uh, like in 2007, um, <laughs> we used to hold this mini hackathons. Uh, this one was just by ourselves. <laughs> We're good friends. And uh, <laughs> in these hackathons, uh, just like regular hackathons, we hack through the day, but at night, uh, we start drinking and we get drunk. And when we get drunk, since we are both geeks, uh, we tend to talk about uh, the future based on many fictional things, like uh, you recognize this anime of Ghost in the Shell, probably. And, um, you know, these very uh, visionary um, products, uh, even the anime or comics, um, depicted many of the uh, integrated information uh, in the future. But these were quite old works, like this one is uh, done, uh, firstly released in 1989. And another thing that we were very much interested in is a concept video provided by Apple, uh, which was released in 1987, which is almost 20 years ago. And it's quite amazing to uh, see this kind of uh, very visionary concept video uh, back in the years where even the internet wasn't available in this world. And do you ever, ever, does everyone know what Knowledge Navigator is? Maybe not, so I have a short video uh, right now here to show everyone. So it depicts a typical day of a professor, so every one of us. You have three messages. Your graduate research team in Guatemala, just checking in. Robert Jordan, a second semester junior, requesting a second extension on his term paper. And your mother reminding you. You have a lecture at 4.15 on deforestation in the Amazon rainforest. Right. Let me see the lecture notes from last semester. No, that's not enough. I need to review more recent literature. Pull up all the new articles I haven't read yet. Journal articles only? Mm-hmm, fine. Your friend Jill Gilbert has published an article about deforestation in the Amazon and its effects on rainfall in the Sub-Sahara. It also covers drought's effect on food production in Africa and increasing imports of food. Contact Jill. I'm sorry, she's not available right now. I left a message that you had called. Okay, let's see. There's an article about five years ago, Dr. Flemson or something. He really disagreed with the direction of Jill's research. John Fleming of Uppsala University. He published in the Journal of Earth Science of July 20 of 2006. Yes, that's it. He was challenging Jill's projection of the amount of carbon dioxide being released to the atmosphere through deforestation. I'd like to recheck his figures. Here's the rate of deforestation he predicted. Mm-hmm, and what happened? Hmm, it was really off. So isn't it amazing that this kind of um, concept was made 20 years ago, even before the internet? And many of the things um, are uh, actually realized by Apple itself, um, like the tablet device uh, with a touch screen or the internet. Well, internet wasn't developed by Apple, but it's been there, and uh, like voice recognition and speech synthesis, and uh, virtual assistant, which is kind of like Siri, but it's quite more smart uh, in the video. So are we there after these 20 years? And if we look at the data integration part, they have a software component, which is context aware. So he, the professor asks uh, about the list of publications that he's not uh, read yet. And so the software knows the context of uh, the professor that uh, about the articles that he's read, and he knows about the colleagues uh, of his research. 
and it summarizes the abstract of the uh, research content. And this is a difficult part. Uh, he says Dr. Flemson or something, and it actually collects the name and gets an article uh, from a very ambiguous uh, term, like about five years ago. And this kind of integration is what we are uh, trying to achieve, right? So um, I think this kind of uh, visionary concept is, uh, can help us achieve uh, this kind of technologies. And in the end, uh, there is a figure uh, extracted from a text. And I guess it's uh, converted into an open semantic format so that you can extract the data points and add the uh, data that's uh, retrieved from another data source, uh, like the actual figure of the deforestation. Uh, and it's being overlapped in the figure. So it's kind of an integration, semantic integration from different data sources. So um, can we do this kind of, kind of things? I think the core technology for each of these uh, key things of in data integration is basically there, but it's not so much integrated as a user interface. So my key uh, motivation in joining this hackathon is to develop a way to uh, provide a user interface to kind of deliver the latest technologies uh, for the end users. And what I've done uh, mostly uh, are listed here, and some of them were uh, published, so I just didn't, just didn't build a prototype and actually finish the products. Uh, but to give you an overview, uh, one thing I did in the year 2010 was called the G Language Book Market, and this one is a bookmarklet that works in a browser. So if you're reading an article in Nature, a typical thing you do in the lab, and you're interested in a keyword, for example, here is a hexakinase. You go up to the uh, menu bar, uh, which lists the bookmarks, and then click on the G-Language bookmarklet, which uh, quickly invokes a ring of icons uh, with a sound. <laughs> and these, each of the icons represents different gateways to different databases. And for example, if you want to look at more biological data, you would go to, uh, let's say, NCVI, and then search for hexakinase. Uh, that can be done directly in this bookmarklet by selecting the NSVI icon. That will uh, quickly search it through the NSVI databases like PubMed, OMIM, uh, different nuke core proteins and different kinds of databases and shows a number of hits. And if you're interested in the amino acid sequence, you will go to the protein database, uh, which will, again, uh, give several results of the uh, keyword search of hexakinase. And by selecting one of the species of interest, you were directed uh, to the NSVI page. So this is a kind of a gateway to do different kinds of uh, database integration. And another thing that we did in the year 2012 is called G-Language Genie, uh, which was developed in Toyama. Genie is a virtual bioinformatics research assistant. It will help you search through bioinformatics databases using natural language queries. Open your browser and access Genie. Once you have Genie open, you can query Genie by typing text in the text box below, or by using Mountain Lion Dictation and Chrome Dictation, you can do the same thing by talking to a PC. Let's start out with a demo. Give me human proteins that relate to cancer. Hit enter and wait a few seconds for Genie to give you the results. These genes were found for the keywords cancer group by Gazlum function. So this is kind of like a Siri mock-up uh, for biology where you can uh, do voice input and voice uh, speech synthesis for the results. And the next thing that we did uh, was last year. Uh, it's called Creek Jump. Maybe some of you noticed I and mean, remember from next year. <laughs> uh, this one is more of a very um, modern interface. <laughs> I'll just give you a small demo again. Whoops, sorry. Oh, Genie. No. <laughs> okay, there we go. So um, if you type um, natural language queries into this box, uh, Creekstown is going to answer it. <laughs> and while she's thinking uh, not to bore you, she gives you cat facts and also uh, nice music behind. And so if you want to ask a biological question like this, which genes are associated with Alzheimer's disease, Christian searches through the web and thinks uh, about the answers, and then gives you the answer that uh, actually the amyloid precursor 
cluster protein is responsible for the um, Alzheimer's disease. And her confidence is shown at the gauge and also at the visage. Another question like, uh, what is G-language genome analysis environment, which is a software that I developed? Uh, this one is the wrong answer, but if you go switch to the uh, second uh, answer of her, uh, actually extracts the uh, sentence from my own manuscript from the Department of Abstract. And things like, how does semantic web technology facilitate life science? It's more of a general question, but she can answer this kind of questions uh, in a few seconds. Like that. <laughs> and a uh, more general question, I mean, she can answer uh, anything. So you can ask, like, uh, who is Masaru Tomita? Of course, you, all of you know, because he just gave a presentation. But uh, Christian would find the answer from the internet. And uh, actually, fetch is a sentence from Wikipedia, uh, because he's so famous, he has an entry in Wikipedia uh, as the Japanese computer science, who is best known as the director of the ESL simulation environment, and he went over GL parser. So what um, I was trying to do was to develop this kind of uh, nice interface to uh, bridge the gaps between the latest technologies and for the end users, and I'd like to continue doing that too. So uh, with this, I'd like to conclude my talk. And uh, this is where you are staying uh, the whole week this week. It's a very nice environment. Uh, it's very uh, isolated, but it has a very nice spring, hot springs and a very nice view. Thank you very much, and enjoy the week. <laughs>